Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Understanding Current Probes. In this presentation, we'll provide a short technical introduction to current probes and how they're used with modern oscilloscopes. Let's start by talking about probes. Oscilloscopes use probes to acquire a signal. That is, probes are the way that the scope interfaces with the device under test. There are many different types of probes, such as passive probes, active probes, differential probes, etc. Despite their differences, these probes all have one thing in common. They produce a voltage at the oscilloscope input. This is because oscilloscopes measure voltage as a function of time. This does, however, raise a question. How can we measure current as opposed to voltage? Since oscilloscopes measure voltage, we need a way to create a voltage that corresponds to a current in a consistent and predictable way. In other words, we need a way to convert a measured current into a voltage value. For example, if one volt were present at the scope input, this could be used to indicate a measured current of one amp. One way to convert a current measurement into a voltage is using a so-called shunt or sense resistor. This is a very small, but also very precise resistor that's placed in series with the circuit. In order to avoid disturbing the circuit, these resistors typically have a very low value, from less than an ohm down to the milliohm range. The voltage drop across this resistor is measured, and using the known value of the resistor, Ohm's law can then be used to calculate the current passing through it. Incidentally, this is essentially how a traditional multimeter measures current. It's placed in line with the circuit, and voltage is measured across the meter's internal shunt. The greatest disadvantage of using a shunt resistor is that it requires the circuit to be broken. Some additional disadvantages include the fact that heating may affect the measurement results, and that significant inductance may be added at higher frequencies. A more common and in many ways more flexible approach is using a special current probe. Current probes are a non-invasive way of measuring current. That is, there is no need to break the circuit. These probes are placed or clamped around the current carrying conductor with an arrow marker indicating the direction of current flow. Current probes work by measuring the electromagnetic field that's created by a current flowing through a conductor, and then mapping this to a voltage using a known ratio of volts per amp. Almost all current probes are active devices, that is, they require power to operate. All current probes can detect and measure AC, but some are also able to measure DC currents as well. Different mechanisms are used for each type of measurement. AC current measurements are made using a current transformer, whereas DC, or very low frequency AC current measurements, are made using something called a Hall effect sensor. Probes that measure down to DC use a combination of these two methods. Note that Hall effect probes are active, that is, they require a power source, and thus AC-DC probes are usually active as well. There are several considerations when selecting a current probe, the first of which is AC-only or AC-DC operation, as we just discussed. Another important consideration is bandwidth, or the frequency range over which the current can be accurately measured. This is usually about 100 MHz or less. Probes which are AC-only will also have a lower bandwidth limit. Since current probes produce a voltage that's proportional to the measured current, the gain sensitivity or scaling factor of the probe is also important. This is specified in volts per amp, that is how many volts are produced per ampere of measured current. And some current probes come with a physical switch that allows this scaling to be changed. The maximum voltage and current rating of the probe limit the maximum measurement value and can also be relevant for safety considerations. And current probes also differ in the way they connect to the scope. Let's take a look at this in a bit more detail. Current probes may attach to the scope through a proprietary interface or using a standard BNC connector. The advantages of using a proprietary interface are that this enables the scope to provide power to the probe and that this also enables the scope to sense the probe type, allowing it to automatically set the proper scaling factor. Degaussing and zeroing, topics we'll discuss later in this presentation, can also be performed via the scope's interface. On the other hand, 
Current probes with a standard BNC interface can be used with any oscilloscope. They have external physical controls for degauss and zeroing, but require an external power source. This can be a USB connection, an internal battery, or a proprietary external supply or connection. Using a clamping style current probe is very simple. The clamp or jaws are opened and then closed around the conductor. Using these types of clamping or split core probes has the advantage that the circuit does not need to be broken. Remember that current probes have a direction of current marker. This arrow is used to indicate the direction of conventional, that is plus to minus, current flow in the measured conductor. Current probes will still work if connected backwards, but the sign of the measured current will be reversed. One technique used to improve current measurement sensitivity is looping the conductor through the probe several times. The sensitivity of the probe increases linearly with a number of loops. Looping the conductor through the opening four times improves sensitivity by a factor of four. Since the scope has no way to know how many times the conductor has been looped, this value must be manually entered into the scope. These loops also increase the insertion impedance by the square of the number of loops. So four loops would increase the insertion impedance by a factor of 16. However, this increased insertion impedance is usually quite small and does not significantly affect measurements at low current levels. Before we conclude this presentation, there are three additional topics we need to cover regarding current probes. Zeroing, demagnetization or degauss, and deskew. Let's start with zeroing. Ideally, a current probe should produce a zero ampere current reading when no current is present. Due to temperature and other environmental conditions, the zero value of a current probe may change over time. But this can be corrected using something called zero adjustment or zeroing. There are two different ways in which zeroing is performed. For probes with a non-proprietary interface, a zero offset knob or wheel is usually built into the probe itself. As mentioned earlier, probes with a proprietary interface usually allow zeroing to be performed using the scope menu or controls, and some scopes have an auto zero function which will apply the correct offset amount and direction automatically. For best accuracy, it's a good idea to zero current probes before making any measurements. And during this zeroing process, the probe should not be near any current carrying conductors. Another potential issue when using current probes is that the ferromagnetic core of the probe may retain some magnetism or flux, even when there's no current present. This is not uncommon after a probe has been used to measure a current that was being switched on and off. This residual magnetism can lead to the creation of an offset and impact measurement results. Most current probes, therefore, support a magnetizing or degauss function that can be done either from the probe itself or via the scope's user interface. A special waveform is generated such that it creates an essentially random magnetic field that erases any residual magnetism in the probe. This is normally a very quick process that only takes a few seconds. Therefore, whenever using current probes, it's a good idea to demagnetize or degauss the probe both before zeroing as well as before making any measurements. The last special topic is deskew. Current probes are often used when making power measurements that involve measuring both voltage and current. In some cases, a time offset or skew may exist between the measured voltage and measured current waveforms, and this is due to different propagation times in the probe leads. This skew can lead to incorrect power results. Special deskew fixtures are used to detect and compensate for skew by generating time-aligned voltage and current pulses. These pulses are simultaneously measured by attached current and voltage probes. If these test waveforms are skewed, an appropriate deskew value can be entered on the scope in order to bring the current and voltage waveforms back into phase, and thus reduce the effects of skew on subsequent measurements. Let's end with a brief summary. Clamp-style current probes are the most common method for measuring current with oscilloscopes. 
These probes produce a voltage that is proportional to the measured current. They're also non-invasive, that is, they don't require the circuit to be broken. Most modern current probes are active and can measure both AC and DC currents using a combination of a current transformer and a Hall effect sensor. Probes may have proprietary or standard BNC connectors for attachment to the scope, and each of these methods has advantages and disadvantages. When choosing a probe for a measurement, important parameters include the probe's bandwidth, the maximum voltage and current rating, and the sensitivity. Measurement accuracy and repeatability can be improved by means of zeroing, demagnetization, and deskewing. This concludes our presentation, Understanding Current Probes. If you'd like to learn more about current measurements, probing, or other oscilloscope-related topics, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.